I wanted to start by just talking a bit about these two logics um, that I mentioned, uh, what I call the samsaric logic and nirvanic logic. Or you could also think of them as uh, the logic of conditional trust and the logic of unconditional trust. And I'm, I'm using the Buddhist terms here, samsara and nirvana, because, um, well, I, because I like the Buddhist terms and also because they point to something kind of interesting metaphysically. So the idea, the very idea of samsara in the early Buddhist tradition, right, is this notion that there's a sort of endless uh, cyclical process of rebirth, that there is basically that we're, it's like Groundhog Day, you know, forever. And except that, you know, it doesn't, it's not the same day every time, it's something new. Um, but what isn't new is a general process in samsara, in the cyclical uh, process of birth and death, where one is always kind of looking for something better and trying to get away from the shit that sucks and really just kind of uh, tuning out from everything <laughs> else. Um, these general strategies that we use to deal with um, difficulty and suffering. And of course, life, uh, you know, we know from, from not just the first noble truth of the Buddha, but from our own <laughs> experience that life is difficult. So of course, uh, when we're in some sorrow, when we're in this realm of um, trying to take care of ourselves and get our needs met and um, feel good and, um, you know, everything that we human beings do, um, we're in samsara. We're, we're trying to find some kind of peace in this crazy, crazy mad, mad house. Uh, that's the early Buddhist perspective. Okay. Um, and then, you know, the logic itself of samsara for me, it boils down to this. Samsaric logic is if this, then that. That's the basic core of samsaric logic. If, if you're into uh, computers or programming, you might also notice this is one of the core fundamental logics of computer programming. You can't really get a, a software to do much without um, having these conditional statements, these uh, ability to say, if something happens, then do this. Uh, and this is the same logic that we work on. You know, if, if I meditate regularly and have a consistent practice, then I will make progress or get enlightened or you know, be able to deal with all my human problems. <laughs> um, if I get, you know, the right kind of economic security and the right job situation, then I'll be able to relax and be happy. Um, and I just got to keep working at that, you know, and then if I am happy and can relax, then maybe I'll start my meditation practice and be able to do that. And then I'll be able to get enlightened, <laughs> you know? Okay. So we have these, you know, we, we have these basic plans <laughs> that we're, if I do this, then I'm going to get this outcome. And that's the basic logic of samsara. Um, you know, we think in some ways, if we do certain things, we, we can kind of steer the outcome in, in the direction we want. Um, and of course, we, we can't always, and we, and we don't have perfect control of the situation. So this is where there's a, there's a built-in failure mode in samsara. Uh, it always will fail us if we think we're going to get what we want. <laughs> or, or maybe we'll get it for a little bit, and then, and then you know, we, we think, okay, now this is going to stay. No, it doesn't. Um, and so samsara is inherently disappointing um, because it never quite works out the way we think. And yet we keep doubling down on this basic strategy. That's the weird thing. We keep thinking, well, maybe it's just me. I'm the, I'm the, like, if I just got better at meditating, then I would get this. Or if I, you know, we keep thinking, you know, the fault is on us or the fault is on others or on the world. Um, it's not that this is, this fault is inherent you know, in reality. Um, um, that would be maybe too much in, in some cases to, 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 to deal with the, the truth of that. Um, but there is a way out of samsara. There is a way to break free from this logic. Um, and again, like this is conditional trust. If I do this, then I'll get this. If I do this practice, then I can sense I'll get this result. That means that I can trust the practice. That means this practice is trustworthy if it will give me the results that I want. Now, in a way, it's weird for me to even say this out loud because, uh, you know, I studied with Daniel Ingram and Kenneth Folk and the pragmatic Dharma tradition, which is all, it's a results focused practice. 
Uh, and frankly, this is why I know samsaric logic is so broke, <laughs> because there's a certain point when you're using maps and models, in my experience, and I've seen this with almost every practitioner I've met, there's a certain point at which you know, that subtle seeking, even if you're successful, even if you have some success with your samsaric logic and it leads you sort of in the direction you think you want to go, at some point, we still run up against this issue that things aren't exactly just so. They're not, um, they're not perfect. And I think as practitioners, we often really do fool ourselves into thinking uh, that we are going to get we are going to be perfect somehow in this process. I still do it. I still find myself believing that, that this is what that's about. Uh, this is about perfection. Um, and I think part of the reason it's confusing is because there is a kind of inherent perfection also in experience. And this points to the nirvanic logic for me. If samsaric logic is if this, then that, nirvanic logic is just this. So we take out the conditions and we just relate to whatever is. In this case, I'm talking about experience, sensory experience in particular. You know, how is our experience? If it's already arisen, it's too late to change it. This is the thing I try to remember again and again with my, my, my practice. Like if it's already there, it's too late to change it. Um, the attempt to change it when it's already arisen is called aversion or desire. You know, we don't want this to be present and we're struggling with our experience. We're in samsara. When it's arisen and we just recognize it's like this, pain is like this, confusion is like this, anger is like this, self-doubt is like this, joy is like this, beauty is like this, concentration, bliss, spaciousness, Absorption are all like this. Every quality as we explored with the is like this practice has the same basic quality of being what it is, of suchness. And this is, you could say, nirvana. When we let go and are with whatever is as it is, you could say we're in nirvana. You know, it's just this. I wanted to share this quote from um, the Zen master Sing San in this um, beautiful teaching called Verses on the Faith Mind. It's also translated uh, as Verses on the Trusting Mind. And this is the last stanza of the teaching. Where for me, he points to first this nirvanic logic, and then he relates it to a what he's calling here in the non-dual. So I also want to talk finally about the non-dual logic. So the logic uh, goes beyond the duality of samsara and nirvana. One thing, all things, move among and intermingle without distinction. To live in this realization is to be without anxiety about non-perfection. To live in this faith is the road to non-duality because the non-dual is one with the trusting mind. One thing, all things move among and intermingle without distinction. Here, I think this is a beautiful pointer to nirvana. To live in this realization, to live in the nirvanic logic is to be without anxiety about non-perfection. So if we really are just with this, we see we aren't perfect. <laughs> it's like this. And somehow, if we can really inhabit that space of non-perfect perfection, of the, the thisness of this fucked up moment, you know, however it's playing out, and sometimes it's not fucked up. <laughs> Uh, and, so, and then really fucked up is just if that's the mind assessing and evaluating the situation, right? There's pain, there's unpleasantness. If we can really live in the suchness, the isness of the experience, however it is, no escaping, um, then we become okay with our humanity. We can live without anxiety about non-perfection. To live in this faith is the road to non-duality. 
to really live at, with whatever is opening fully to it, welcoming whatever's present. No resistance, just this. Living in this is the road to non-duality because there's no separation between what's arising and the awareness that knows it. They're one and the same. Because the non-dual is one with the trusting mind. If we can trust everything that arises, then there's no separation between us and that. There's just this.